I'd like to talk about the genetic aspects of Alzheimer's disease. Unfortunately, Alzheimer's has become a massive problem worldwide, and it touches 54% of the population. So sooner or later, you are going to run into this topic, and I want to give you some very important information on prevention, as well as what you can do if you have it yourself, or a friend or family member has this condition. But I want to talk about a genetic tendency for Alzheimer's, okay? Um, if you get your genes tested, which I'm not necessarily recommending you do or you don't, I just want to educate you on a very specific uh, common gene that shows up with 20% of the population. And this involves a variation in a gene called APOE, but basically this molecule helps you transport uh, cholesterol into the brain. Now, it does a lot of other things, but the area that I'm going to focus on is what it does in the brain. It transports cholesterol into the brain, okay, and helps maintain cholesterol levels as well as clears cholesterol out of the brain. So you can think about APOE is really a shuttle or a little carrier boat that transports cholesterol. And there's three variations that you could potentially have. The first one is APOE2, okay, and then you have an APOE3, and the next one is APOE4, okay. Now, I guess the best way to uh, help you understand this simply is that APOE2 would be comparable to um, ordering something through Amazon, you know, getting it prime, and you get it overnight. So it's a fast delivery of a certain product. If you have APOE2, you're going to be able to transport cholesterol very, very fast, and you're going to be able to clear it very quickly as well. And about 5% of the population has this variation, APOE2, and they will rarely ever get Alzheimer's. So now, APOE3. Well, that would be like, you know, using like FedEx or UPS. Um, pretty decent delivery, um, not too fast, not too slow probably is going to arrive in three days, maybe a week. And so if you have the variation, which 75% of the population has, you have a normal function of that gene. And so you're not really at risk of getting Alzheimer's. But the real problem comes in with the next variation called APOE4. If you have this variation in your DNA, this would be equivalent to using the regular post office during the holidays. It's going to be extremely slow and you may have some issues. 20% of the population has this APOE4 fraction, and they're at risk for getting Alzheimer's, okay? Especially if it's late stage Alzheimer's. And now you're probably asking, like, what does cholesterol have to do with Alzheimer's, right? Well, did you realize that your brain is 25% made up of cholesterol? In fact, your brain cells make cholesterol, uh, this cholesterol is needed for many, many different things. And I'm not just talking about cholesterol. I'm talking about other types of lipids as well. So your brain, it's like 65% fat, and it uses a lot of cholesterol to make uh, its coating or its myelin sheath. It uses triglycerides for energy. It needs cholesterol for the synapses to work, to allow uh, it to adapt to stress. And it needs it desperately to be able to repair. And what's very unique about Alzheimer's is that if we don't have enough cholesterol that's driven into the neuron, okay, you will start losing synapses, especially in certain parts of your brain that involve memory, learning, concentration, like the hippocampus and even the frontal cortex. And so really you have a cholesterol deficiency in your neurons. Now this is pretty interesting because we always think about cholesterol being a really bad thing, but in this case, it's a very good thing if you have enough cholesterol. But at the same time, there's some other things going on. Because remember I mentioned that um, this protein also clears cholesterol from the brain? So we have this situation where we have a deficiency of cholesterol, which is basically killing off the neurons. At the same time, have this toxicity of a lack of clearing of cholesterol. So it's called lipotoxicity which comes with a lot of issues, including resultant placking. You increase this lipotoxicity by a factor of 4x. Now, your brain is now going to do something to compensate for this. So it's going to force the brain to switch to glucose metabolism. But the problem is 
this gene also blocks the ability to absorb glucose too. Now since glucose is blocked, really what's happening is we're getting a lack of fuel to the neurons. The absolute best thing you can do is start the ketogenic diet where you lower carbs, you start doing intermittent fasting, and ketones bypass this problem and feed the neurons directly. So basically we have a situation where we have low cholesterol, um, trying to switch to glucose but can't, and so we really have a problem with lack of material to build the membranes, as well as a lack of fuel to feed neurons. Now, the reason why this is associated with late stage Alzheimer's is because just aging in general causes you to lose the ability to utilize the cholesterol too. So it's kind of like a compounding thing where this variation causes a low cholesterol, but then aging makes it worse. And this is why if you have this gene problem, it could potentially kick in around 60 to 65 years old or a little bit later. The other really interesting thing about uh, cholesterol in general is that when someone takes a lipophilic statin, their risk of dementia goes way up. Why do you think that is? Well, because statins block cholesterol. And when someone takes a statin, they really have a problem with certain parts of the brain that are involved with Alzheimer's. So in one study, they found that if you're on a lipophilic uh, statin, your chances of getting Alzheimer's doubles. Realize this, because someone has this genetic problem, um, there is something you can do about it because there's something called epigenetics, which are those actions that are related to lifestyle, uh, diet, environment, that you can suppress this gene so it doesn't become active, it doesn't become a problem, and things can work correctly. The first thing is to avoid alcohol. Alcohol is a very potent effect, worsening this problem and kicking in this gene so it's more expressed and there's more problems. Number two, to avoid smoking. That has a huge uh, impact on this gene as well, as well as secondhand smoking. Number three, exercise. I'm talking about consistent, regular exercise has a significant effect on this gene. It can greatly, greatly help you. You know, our bodies are designed to exercise and move. And if we're not exercising, all sorts of problems occur. But the exercise alone as one factor can help decrease atrophy of the hippocampus in your brain, which is intimately involved in memory and concentration and learning. Exercise increases blood flow to the brain directly. It also increases something called the BDNF, the brain-derived neurotrophic factor, which is similar to miracle grow for your brain. It helps you grow new brain cells. And exercise is a potent stimulus to increase this BDNF. Most of the population has insulin resistance. And exercise is a great way to improve that situation. And what's interesting about that is when someone has placking in the brain because they have Alzheimer's, the placking can insert into your insulin receptors and actually cause insulin resistance in the brain. And there's a huge association between insulin resistance and dementia and Alzheimer's. So anything you can do to improve insulin is a very, very good thing. And I'm gonna mention just two things right now, going on a low carb diet, fasting, taking a natural form of vitamin B1, and taking apple cider vinegar in your water. Those things are very, very significant. And lastly, exercise can help reduce inflammation in your brain. The next thing I'm going to mention is omega-3 fatty acids that can greatly help you. One of the problems with omega-3 fatty acids, especially if you're very, very deficient and you have a lot of inflammation, it could take quite some time to replenish the brain with omega-3 fatty acids, specifically DHA. It could take, in some people, up to 2.5 years to fully replenish your stores of omega-3 fatty acids. It doesn't happen overnight. Now, there's another very fascinating um, compound that I wanna bring up that I just recently uh, learned about its association with helping someone with dementia and Alzheimer's, and it's called Tudka. I talked about Tudka in my other videos, but what is Tudka? Tudka is a type of bile salt. We have bile that's made by our liver, that's stored in the gallbladder, that helps us break down fats, also, our friendly bacteria makes a secondary type of bile. But there's a type of bile, which is a little bit different, called tudka, that has many different benefits. One, 
would be to prevent gallstones, but it has a very potent effect on your brain. It's neuroprotective. It can cross the blood-brain barrier. It can help increase insulin sensitivity in your brain. It can directly inhibit the plaque formation that is involved in Alzheimer's. It can help improve the neurons in the prefrontal lobe as well as the hippocampus. And it actually has protective effects in the mitochondria inside your neurons. So Tatka is a very interesting molecule, especially as this relates to the first topic of cholesterol regulation, because what uh, bile salts do in general for the body is they help to balance out and regulate and modulate cholesterol. But I had no idea until recently of what it can do to cholesterol in the brain. Because remember, this genetic variation is creating a big problem with two things. One, a deficiency of cholesterol, as well as a lack of clearing of cholesterol in the brain. So I think Tutka is really just helping you clear out this excess uh, cholesterol. That's just my theory, and I don't know for sure. The last uh, remedy I'm going to recommend is vitamin D3, okay? Now, this also relates to cholesterol because in order to make vitamin D3, you need cholesterol. And this is why people that take statins end up with a low vitamin D situation. And vitamin D is intimately involved with so many different things, immune system, uh, pain, depression, but it also has a huge effect on the brain. And these are facts, okay? And I'm gonna put all the references down below. Your cognitive decline is increased by a factor of 19 fold, that's 19 X, when you are deficient in vitamin D. Dementia is associated with a vitamin D deficiency. You're 21% more likely to get Alzheimer's than you would be if you had normal vitamin D levels. You're four times less likely to develop Alzheimer's if you have high levels of cholesterol in your blood. Now, if you haven't seen my video on Tutka, there's a lot more that it can do. Check it out. I put it up right here.